I'm Kathleen Hui from the Matindo Center in the Department of Radiology at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Today, we will show you a procedure for functional magnetic resonance imaging during acupuncture stimulation. When we first started to apply fMRI to image the effects of acupuncture on the brain, we had no idea what the data would look like. Over the years, we have built a database of acupuncture with fMRI monitoring at several major acupuncture points in approximately 200 subjects in health and in disease, providing a strong foundation for future studies. Dr. Kenneth Kwong, MRI physicist from the Martino Center, directed the fMRI imaging in these studies. He will be delivering the concluding remarks. Ming Li, practicing acupuncturist and research acupuncturist at the center will perform the acupuncture procedures. Dr. Vitaly Napato, expert in acupuncture fMRI at the center, will demonstrate the data acquisition process with physiological monitoring. So, let's get started. During the scanning session, physiological parameters such as the electrocardiogram or ECG Galvanic skin response, or SCR, and respiration are recorded from the subject. The signals are recorded with a power lab attached to a computer, equipped with chart software from 80 instruments, which amplifies, digitizes, and records the signals coming from the subject. To set up the respiratory belt system that is used to record respiration, plug the transducer into a power outlet in the scanner control room and feed the belt through the inlet into the scanner room. To synchronize the physiological data with the fMRI data, connect a BNC cable from the fMRI scanner trigger box to the power lab in the control room. The chart software can then be set up to start recording when a signal is received from the scanner. Now gather the ECG monitoring devices. You will need four ECG electrodes and an ECG cable connected to an MRI-compatible rolling portable cart. To measure skin conductance, plug two SCR connectors into the breakout box in the scanning room and have skin conductance gel ready. Now let's begin prepping the subject for the scan. Before you begin, make sure that the subject is not anxious or fatigued and has eaten a light meal prior to the scan, as this can affect the brain response to acupuncture stimulation. Bring the subject into the scanner room and have them insert earplugs to protect their ears from the noise of the scanner. Now place the subject onto the scanner bed and use cushioned supports to immobilize their head. Acupuncture scans are especially susceptible to head motion artifacts because of their low signal to noise ratio. To reduce body motion, place a support under the subject's knees to keep the heels from touching the surface of the stretcher. Fasten the head coil and make final adjustments to the support cushions to ensure that the subject is comfortable. Because an average session lasts two hours, comfort is vital for uninterrupted scanning. MRI-compatible physiological monitoring can be performed during scanning if desired. ECG signal quality should be verified before recording. In this demonstration, we are using a 1.5 Tesla Siemens Avanto MRI system equipped for echoplanar imaging with a standard quadratic head coil. For studies with acupuncture stimulation, thinner brain slices should be acquired to reduce susceptibility artifacts. Use slices 3 mm thick with a 0.6 mm or 0.75 mm gap in the sagittal or axial orientation to cover the entire brain including the brainstem and cerebellum. Acquire functional scans with a T2 weighted gradient echo sequence with a repetition time or TR of 4 seconds and an echo time or TE of 30 milliseconds, field of view or FOV 200 mm, matrix 64 by 64, and flip angle 90. The shorter TE helps reduce susceptibility artifacts while the relatively long TR permits whole brain coverage with high spatial resolution. The amygdala, hippocampus, ventromedial prefrontal cortex, and subgenual areas located at the base of the brain are particularly susceptible to signal loss. Check the echo planar images to ensure good coverage in these regions. Using a 1.5 Tesla, instead of higher field strength magnets for data collection, will help to minimize such artifacts for specialized studies. Be sure to precede image collection by at least four dummy scans to allow for equilibration of the fMRI signal. Now let's see how to perform acupuncture during an fMRI experiment.
Begin by instructing the subject to relax, keep their eyes closed, and refrain from moving during the scanning. To avoid noxious stimulation, instruct the subject to raise one finger if any of the acupuncture sensations approaches a pain rating score of 8 out of 10, and to raise two fingers in case of any degree of sharp pain. Before the scanning begins, insert a sterile, disposable, high-quality all-silver acupuncture needle into the acupoint vertically. The needle can be manipulated by gentle rotation or by lift and thrusting. The rotation technique is used more often. Test the subject's sensitivity to needle manipulation to estimate the depth of insertion and the manipulation force required to elicit de chi without causing undue discomfort or noxious pain. During the 10-minute scan, rotate the needle at 1 Hz during two 2-minute two blocks separated by a rest period in which the needle is left in place. Make sure not to approach or leave the subject directly before or after the stimulation period, as that motion could affect the results. Repeat the procedure on the other acupoints. For sensory control or sham acupuncture, we deliver superficial tactile stimulation to the acupoint with a size 5.88 von frame monofilament and a matched paradigm. This is done before real acupuncture stimulation to the acupoint. It can be done by free tapping of the filament or by inserting filament through a guiding tube used for acupuncture needles. Upon completion of acupuncture stimulation, record the force with which the needle resists manipulation. At the end of each scan, have an investigator other than the acupuncturist ask the subject to grade the sensations experienced on a scale of 0 to 10. The list of acupuncture sensations is derived from the acupuncture community rather than from typical pain questionnaires in the literature. The fMRI data is then categorized according to the psychological response, de qi, de qi mixed with sharp pain, no acupuncture sensations, and sharp pain only. It is extremely rare to encounter sharp pain only. Here's a look at some representative fMRI data which we processed with AFNI. Other software such as FSLOR FreeSurfer can also be used. Functional scans are overlaid over the high-resolution anatomical maps of the cohort. All group maps shown here are thresholded at P less than 0 .0001 uncorrected. First, let's see how acupuncture de qi differs from tactile stimulation. This is data from a group of 37 subjects. In acupuncture de qi, clusters of deactivated structures appeared at the medial prefrontal cortex, medial parietal cortex, and medial temporal lobe on both hemispheres. Such changes were sparse in tactile stimulation. The right lateral temporal lobe also exhibited more marked deactivation during acupuncture. In contrast to deactivation, tactile stimulation showed more activation of the sensory motor BA43 and association cortex BA22. The right anterior insula was paradoxically activated during acupuncture, but not tactile stimulation. Here we see the correlation between the psychophysical and hemodynamic response. This graph represents acupuncture de qi compared to de qi plus sharp pain. The prominent deactivation of the medial prefrontal cortex, medial parietal cortex, and medial temporal lobe seen with de qi absent pain was attenuated in the presence of pain. With pain, activation of the sensory motor and association cortices became more prominent, and a subset of the limbic regions, such as the middle cingulate supplemental motor area, posterior cingulated BA23, amygdala, and cerebellar vermis became activated. Activation of the insula in de qi was localized to the right anterior division, while activation in pain did not show specific localizations. Here we see overlap of limbic paralimbic neocortical networks, or LPNN, from 48 subjects during acupuncture stimulation with the default mode network, or DMN. The clusters of deactivated regions during acupuncture stimulation in the medial prefrontal cortex, medial parietal cortex, and temporal lobe of the LPNN by general linear model analysis and by model-free fuzzy cluster analysis showed marked similarity with the core regions of the DMN. We have just shown you how to monitor the dynamic effect of acupuncture on the human brain using fMRI. When doing this procedure, it's important to remember to pay attention to the subject's comfort and psychophysical response, aiming to generate their qi and avoid noxious stimulation. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with the experiment.